everyone, I'm here with a really special episode of Project Resilient because I have not just one, but two teens today with me. They're very special um, couple, and that's why they're here together, because they are a couple. I've got Molly and Jack, and they're going to share with us what it was like to go through that pandemic um, as uh, high school sweethearts and and beyond, right? Yeah. yeah. So welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Christine. Yeah. So you guys just graduated. Um, you're 12. Um, different. Well, no, same school, right? Yeah. Same school. But it was quite the, you know, a different year 12 than you were expecting, of course. What? Um, tell me what you guys were expecting, you know, year 12 to be like. Um, as, as far as like together, like what you're looking forward to? Um, so we were both in leadership roles. Um, Molly was a school captain um, and I was a house prefect. So Molly's was a bit more, I don't know, a bit bigger, felt more important to um, But no, there's a few things that out of school did with prefects. Like there's a trip to East Timor. Um, so we were expecting to be able to do that together. And there's lots of just lots of like responsibilities and like sports days and stuff like mm. even small stuff like that and um like going to other campuses and hanging out with like younger kids like I was expecting us to be able to go see my little brother and sister maybe at their campus mm. um and there's all that like exciting stuff that we'd look forward to um in those leadership positions and that didn't happen mm. um and so that was definitely something I think we were looking forward to. And then also studying like together at school. Like everyone talks about how year 12 is this big, big thing. And you are uh, all prepared for it. You're like, okay, yeah, we're going to be studying every day. And, we, and we, you know, obviously we're talking about like, okay, yeah, we can study in the library together at lunch times and stuff. Mm. And then obviously that didn't happen. Yeah. 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 And then how about um, Molly for you? Were you looking forward to um, anything else in particular that missed out on yeah I think the East Timor trip was a really big one because mm. that would have been my first time overseas too so to do it with oh, wow. um, an overseas veteran like Jack was really nice and also like a special thing too because we're going over to help the community over there and mm -hmm. build those relationships with um, Timorese people I mean yeah. Timor Leste would be amazing but no definitely the studying thing and even just supporting each other because year 12 is that year where you get to kind of narrow down your passions so Jack with his music and me with my history and my English and things so supporting each other in that like mm -hmm. going to Jack's performances and things and yeah. um, we had drama performances at school too like we mm -hmm. missed out on supporting each other in those things as well which was yeah. disappointing yeah well you guys got to support each other in a totally different way yes. so tell me tell me what um, what that was like how did you um, yeah, how did you continue to grow as a couple and build your relationship despite not being able to see each other every day at school? Yeah. Mm. I think the initial thing was we absolutely adore each other. So it wasn't a thing of how are we going to get around? Like, it's like, what are we going to do? It's just like, this is the situation we're in. How can we make sure that we both are feeling loved and mm -hmm. um, have that kind of, yeah, keep that connection too, which is a really big thing for the pandemic. Um, so yeah, we just, FaceTime. Lots of, hundreds yeah. of hours of FaceTime, not mm -hmm. sponsored by FaceTime, but should be. <laughs> um, but no, we had, we still managed to do date nights where we would both watch a Netflix movie and start at the same time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, little things like, like dinner together. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wrote Jack a couple of letters and we'd do handovers, we'd do puzzle handovers. So we'd both do a puzzle and then we'd switch it. Their family was much faster at Wait, <laughs> oh, so, so you would do like a physical puzzle yeah. and then meet up and pass it on? Yeah, yeah. So, But there was always like a six foot distance or whatever, like a one and a half meters. Mm. Like there were times um, when like my dad would drive me over to Molly's house and we'd like be over the front fence talking to each other. Mm. Um, but there was still that physical distance. And a lot of the time, obviously, you know, we had to just be at home. Yeah. Um, well, you guys were fortunate in the sense that um, you guys live outside of metropolitan Melbourne, yeah. um, the western area in Geelong and Point Lonsdale, right? Yeah. So you guys did not have as strict, I mean, it was still hard, but it was as strict. You know, you didn't have the 5K. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you have a curfew? No. No curfew or anything, but you, I couldn't go over to your house. No. I, like, we couldn't see each other or, like, anything. Like, we could... There were times, like I said before, where I could like go over and we could be one and a half meters away and we mm. could like go on a walk together maybe, mm. but I don't think we ever, ever did that because we were doing school. Yeah, doing yeah. school. And, yeah. It was like, because year 12, it's difficult to 
do anything besides school if you're really focused on if your school at the end mm. um, but especially with that barrier yeah. like with the restrictions mm-hmm. like and yeah and also just wanting to do what was best for the community because this was during the first lockdown like we had no idea what was happening this was all really mm. new and so I think um, in you know reflection of like our grandparents and the um, older people in our lives who we love we were like we have to make sure that we keep them safe so mm. that was a nice thing to fall back on as well that like we're doing it for a reason not just why mm. we're just sitting in our houses so that yeah. was nice yeah I think you really had to have a long view of the lockdown and the Mm -hmm. pandemic Mm -hmm. or, you know, and understand like there was a purpose behind everything in order to keep you motivated because if you didn't, then it would just be like, what are we doing here? Because I know a lot of people kind of despaired, you know, especially towards the end. Yeah. There's like two stints of lockdown for us. I don't know how it was for Melbourne, but for us, there's like two stints of it. And I remember the first one was the worst, Mm -hmm. even though it wasn't Uh as long. Yeah. Um, because we didn't know how long it would be. It was like two weeks in. Yeah. We were just like, this is the worst thing ever. Yeah. But the other one was longer and we knew, okay, it's this long until we can see each other. And that made it so much easier mm. to have like, a, like an end goal. Yeah, yeah. Mm. absolutely. Yeah. Um, what has this experience, this pandemic, taught you, either of you, both of you guys, on um, what it takes to keep a relationship going and like working yeah I think um connection and just trust was a really big thing and also Mm -hmm. falling back on that um like hey we really really like each other and Mm -hmm. knowing that yeah I don't know taking the time to make sure that each other was you know feeling loved and things through Mm -hmm. the little things and text through the day but we did spend a lot of time together electronically mm-hmm. but after a while it just doesn't feel the same because you just want to be able to give them a hug so yeah it's yeah mm-hmm. it taught us that in hindsight now like we come across little challenges today even like me being in Geelong and Jack being in Melbourne and being like this is nothing because we did mm-hmm. the first lockdown together which was such a big unknown and then mm-hmm. the second one like we can actually as yeah. a couple it's made us way stronger and just more trusting in and where our relationship is and what it is and yeah yeah, how much we um love it yeah how about you jack any revelations um it's just helped me to value our time together even more Mm. and to be more grateful for it just because you know you're at school together you kind of take it for granted that you're going to be eating lunch and like oh give me one of your blueberries like like that interaction that like banter that just kind of hanging out every day Mm. you totally took for granted yeah but now, like, every single time, especially when, like, Molly's living in Geelong this year and commuting to the city for school, and I'm living here, like, we'll go out for lunch, like, for a day, and, like, I'll see Molly for, like, an hour, and I'll be so grateful for that time, whereas if I was used to just seeing her every day at school, maybe we'd have been like, oh, I only saw her for, like, an hour today, yeah. and so it's really taught me to, like, value every moment together. Yeah. No, that's great. Those are, like, really mature lessons that a lot of couples don't learn until much mm-hmm. later yeah you kind of take for granted when you can see each other day to day that yeah. you're you're just going to see them tomorrow and or the next day and the next day um well speaking of uh distance and school so we are on campus of uh university of melbourne mm-hmm. um south bank campus yeah. and um tell us tell us why we're here why did we do our photo shoot here um so this is my campus this is the performing arts music fine campus arts. the fine arts campus uh, it's not all performing arts it's like film and stuff here um, so this is where I'll be going to school for all of my music stuff um, and then there's the Parkville campus which is the bigger one north of the CBD mm-hmm. which is where Molly will be going for all of her Bachelor of Artsy yeah. subjects yeah. Um, but this is where I'll be spending most of my week I'd assume either attending lectures or practicing or rehearsing um, and I live like three minutes away from here, which is awesome. Well, that's that's interesting because, um, like you were saying, you live three minutes here from here because you moved out here, and mm-hmm. that is another point, um, which is unusual, right, for Australian high schoolers to move out of home to go to school. Um, what's So your family moved you out here because otherwise your commute would be like two hours, two hours a day or so? Yeah, if my parents drove me every time, it would be about two hours, like if they drove me to the train station. But if I was waiting for the bus that came to Point Lonsdale, like once in a blue moon, um, (laughs) it'd be like almost three hours maybe, just to both ways. Um, 
And so, yeah, moving out here is really important, especially with the nature of my degree, studying music. Mm. Like, I'll be practicing and rehearsing and playing performances here. Like, you have to be immersed in that culture yeah. and be making friends with those musicians and stuff. And to be all the way on the other side of Geelong doing that just wouldn't have worked. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And then how about you, Molly? You're going to um, take the more traditional route, uh, mm. at least this year. You're going to be commuting from Geelong to yeah. the main campus. And how, how are you feeling about this new... Um, stage of life season yeah I think it's a really big season of change so to have that kind of constant of home mm -hmm. um my, I love my family and my mum's mm -hmm. my best friend so I'm really Aww. lucky um <laughs> to yeah I'm really happy with the commute and it's only three days a week so I get to keep my job down in Geelong but it's also that kind of like slow transition into life up here mm. not only for myself but for my family too so um yeah just a slow slow transition and yeah. we'll see where it takes me yeah, I mean, there's so many ways to transition out of high school. There's, you know, like what Jack's doing, which is, you know, pack up and move, move, move out of home. But of course, you, you go home, you'll probably be able to go home whenever you want. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then yours, Molly, which is, um, you know, staying home with the around surrounded by the people that love you most and support you and then slowly, yeah, get out there. I think there's no wrong way to do it. It just depends on your, your situation. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, well, what do you guys, we're almost done with our photo shoot. So we just took a break and we were having too much fun and decided <laughs> to take a break and, and shoot this before we left campus. Um, how's it been going? What, what were you expecting, Jack, and just how, how's it going so far? You haven't really seen any of the photos except the one no. behind the back of my camera, yeah. which Molly commented on. <laughs> what did you say? I said that Jack should just hand them out to people on the street because he looked great. <laughs> I, showed, I showed a photo of Jack to Molly from the back of my camera and she started saying oh wow like you should just hand this out and I thought she was gonna say to like all your family or like hand this out to your grandparents but she said you should just start handing this out to everyone on the street <laughs> <laughs> that was the line of the day that's so funny all right how's it going how's, how's the photo shoot going Jack we're almost done so how's mm. I mean, I've really enjoyed it. I think it's gone really well. You've been very good at telling me what to do with my weird, awkward, long hands and <laughs> arms and stuff. Um, and I've just trusted everything you've said. I've had things in weird positions and then you'd show me the photo. I'm like, oh yeah, that works. Yeah. Um, and you said before, like, I won't be able to look at the campus the same way. I'll be like, oh yeah, that's where we took that photo. Or, oh, that would have been really cool. Like that place there, like just every single little spot that you found like interesting you said textures of the bricks I said yeah. cool bricks yeah. but like the interesting textures and like materials to use as a backdrop yeah, um, yeah I've really enjoyed it yeah. it's been really fun how about you Molly I've loved it it's been awesome I yeah. think um, especially as a young woman there's a lot of stigma in the media about looking a certain way especially mm -hmm. like going out and modeling like um, and it's nice to go out and do it from an angle of we went personality first and then we're taking photos which mm -hmm. I really enjoyed because it's hard to go out and when there's a big stigma of what you should look like and all those sorts of things mm -hmm. to feel really beautiful in your own skin and um, mm -hmm. your skills are amazing as a photographer Aww, so it's been you. awesome to be like I look like that so <laughs> yeah and, and Molly is not I mean she's just all natural today I didn't tell her anything to wear or how to do her hair or makeup so she's just naturally this beautiful so we can see why Jack yeah, with her. So. I think so. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> All right, guys. You guys have been so fun. And um, let's go finish up our photo shoot. But I just want to thank you for just talking to me and sharing your story about, um, yeah, what how 2020 went and um, just being open like that. Awesome. Thank you so much for having us, Christine. It's been so much fun. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's been the best. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Um, I look forward to sharing the pictures with you. So by this point, they should be up on the website. Check out my website, christinetanphotography.com. I'm going to put a few of these at the end of this video as well, so you can enjoy those. All right. We will see you next time. Bye.